Hey everyone, my name is Pablo Lafik, and welcome to the Fire Safety Philosophy Podcast. Now let me be clear, I am not here just some guy with master's degree in fire safety engineer. So yeah, they have that. I am here as a guy who has looked fire in their eye twice. Twice, I almost didn't make it out. Twice I thought, that's it. And yet, here I am, alive, stubborn, and talk, talking into a microphone instead of being a piece of fresh. So yeah, maybe that's why I'm doing this. Maybe fire gave me two chances so I could share my story with you. I worked in a fire department, running into smoke when most people run out. I work in architectural companies, drawing walls and systems that could decide if people live or die. I've been in deep mining operations where a fire underground is your worst nightmare. I work in nuclear and energy, where one spark could mean disaster on a scale you can even imagine. And along the way, I went on ventilation systems and walls, because sometimes the stuff we had just wasn't enough. So, this podcast is not just about codes and calculations, it's about the big questions. It's about asking and answering what it really means to be safe from fire. Before we dive in, a quick word. This podcast is brought to you by FireHard, Fire Safety Marketing Agency. At FireHard, we help fire safety professionals, companies, and educators share their mission with the world. From campaigns to merchandise, we turn safety messages into movements. Because saving lives isn't just about costs. It's about communication. Learn more at fireheartfsma.com. So, let's back to the show. Now, if you came here expecting a lecture on sprinkler pipe diameters or how to read close 3 to 2 over the building code, sorry to disappoint you. There are textbooks for that. This podcast is different. This podcast is about philosophy about digging into the stuff cause can't explain. For example, what does safe really mean? Why do we settle for minimums as or if there are maximums? Why do we only wake up after tragedy? But here is the thing. I don't want this to just be a podcast of questions. We are not here to sit around the campfire going why, 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 like philosophers in Togas. We are here to also see her. How do we actually fix it? What solutions are out there? What can we do differently tomorrow morning? So here, questions and answers. Not just fear, but hope. So, who should be listening? If you are an engineer, inspector or architect, hey, I've been in your shoes, guys. You'll see calls from a whole new angle. If you are a firefighter or a chief, you'll see that prevention is just as heroic as suppression. If you are a policymaker or manager, guess what? You can outsource responsibility. You will hear why it belongs to you too. And if you are just a parent or someone who wants their kids safe at night, this is for you as well. Because fire doesn't care if you wear a uniform or not. This podcast is for everyone who understands that safety is not only about compliance, it's about culture, choices, And yes, solutions. All right, let's get to the big question. What does it mean to be safe from fire? Let's try to define it. An FPA says, a reasonable level of protection. The Canadian Building Code calls it uh, life safety objectives. Sounds good, right? But here is my truth. Nothing in this world is absolutely safe. Not your house, not your car. Not even your cup of coffee if you spill it. Safety is not the absence of risk. Safety is controlled risk. And how we control that risk, that's what defines not just how safe we are, but how happy we are. Because a life without risk doesn't exist, but a life where risk is managed wisely. That's a safe and maybe even a happy life. Here is how the dangerous part the illusion of safety. I have seen buildings pass every inspection, tick every box, and still kill people in fire. 
Greenfield Tower was safe. The station nightclub had exits. Mining tunnels had ventilation. Nuclear facilities had procedures. But when the real fire comes, paper doesn't burn well. People do. And me? Twice, I almost didn't walk away. Once as a child, once later as a worker. And let me tell you, in those moments, survival had nothing to do with the codebook. It wasn't about people, instinct, and maybe just plain luck. That's why I don't like when someone says, don't worry, this building is safe. I always, I always think, safe for what? Safe for who? Safe until when? Mining taught me that safe meant control and small, long enough for people to reach the surface. That's it. Minutes mattered. Nuclear taught me that safe meant perfection, because one uncontrolled fire could affect a whole nation or the world. Architecture taught me that, the, that shortcuts, the cheaper wall, the thinner door, the missing feel could be the difference between escape and tragedy. All these lessons told me the same thing. Safety is never absolute, but with design, culture, and responsibility, risk can be controlled, and people can live. A quick thank you to today's sponsor, Fireheart Fire Safety Marketing Agency. Fireheart exists because fire safety deserves a voice in modern media. Whether it's digital campaigns, community posters, or even podcasts like this one, Fireheart helps fire safety professionals spread knowledge and save lives. Because fire safety is more than a job, it's a culture. Visit fireheartfsma.com to see how we can help. So, that's why I call this fire safety philosophy. Because it's not just about pipes and wires. It's about the way we think, the way we decide, the way we act. Do we spend money on prevention or only celebrate suppression? Do we wait for tragedy to change or act before? Do we accept the minimum or demand more? These are not just technical questions. They are cultural, ethical, human. And here on this podcast, we are not just going to ask them. We are going to chase answers from history, from science, from real disasters, and from imagination of the future. So, what does it mean to be safe from fire? It means remembering safety is never absolute. It is controlled risk. And the way we control risk defines not just our safety, but our happiness, our trust, our future. I survived fire twice. That's why I'm here. To ask questions, yes, but also to search for answers. And I will leave you with this. Next time you, you say, I feel safe, ask yourself and be honest. Are you measuring the risk you control or just learning on hope? Thank you for hanging out with me in this very first episode of the Fire Safety Philosophy Podcast. Next episode. We'll talk about why fire safety is more philosophy than engineering. And yes, we'll look for answers together. If this got your brain turning, hit the subscribe button. Share this with someone who thinks safety is just paperwork. And leave me a review. I will actually read it. I promise. I'm Paolo Lapico. Care about lives? Think beyond compliance. Until next time, stay thoughtful, stay safe, and please... Don't play with matches. Bye-bye.